Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of appreciation to Abraham Mohammed, Adam, Adrian Quintana, Alistair Main, Blue Ridge Ranger, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Chow Young Cat, Chris Hillman, Dank, Dave Rackier Gafford, David Robinson, David Wayne Foster, does Studio 68, Edwin Johnson, Erwin Jennisons, Felix Hung, Fireball X, God Rockin, Henrik86, Joshua Balsimo, Kirsten Smith, Liam Nedrick, Life is Short, Maria Nealands, Matt, Missouri Bear, Nagara, Nathan Thompson, Nyby, Rob H, Skeptic936, Steve ALM, Texas Mike, the Real Gabster, Tina Baker, Unbelievable Productions, and Windrider. So a massive shout out to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now it seems we have at least a couple of people in the Discord server, so I'll raise the mic on them and you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for today's live show. When you switch and then laugh at them. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, like when you get hot and mad, and uh tearing them up and then the next time you come out you're laughing at them you're breaking up the show a little bit yeah i mean i'll i'll be annoyed when i'm annoyed and tell them off when they need telling off but ultimately speaking it's not like i'm going to stay permanently annoyed at them in the moment well, i'm furious <laughs> that's why i do it i'm furious in the moment <laughs> Right, that's what I'm saying as well. Well, and when you do it, you know, we we, we get fired up too, right? But then when you uh, switch it to laughter, because they're fools, right? <laughs> Can't think I'm serious for too long. Say again, sorry. I think when you mute, you usually have a good reason to mute because it's just obnoxious at a level. like. If you hear, if you try to hear Rumpus or any of these people, I've talked with others that they they're not trying to argue anything. They're just trying to mess shit up, and they do it very effectively. Yeah. They're total liars. When they, uh, yeah. I listen to that crap all the time, I, I have to tell them they're full of crap all the time on there. Say they are too, though. I've talked with them afterwards, and I'm like, "What was up, dude?" And they'll just be like. The do I hate Nathan. I'm like, okay, well, that's not really an argument. You're not contributing shit. It's just annoying. So you're gonna get muted, dude. That makes sense. Sure, I see it in my like, comments I just all the want time. To hear the debate. That's I want to hear the dialogue. I don't want to hear just shit talking. Yeah, go to the comment section or the chat stream if you want that. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I, I'm trying to avoid all cancer. Actually, <laughs> that's how I see it. it was, the chat streams the pits. Sure, more than I have to. I completely agree. It's, it's the pits. The chat stream is terrible, as our comments. Especially when you know for a fact that the Earth is flat. Well, it's just here. Let's hear honest arguments. Like I would like to hear honest ballers. I don't. I've never heard one. They five minutes of talking to them, they just distract and it's weird. I just want to hear an honest conversation. They don't. Good luck. With that's their pain. Know, that yeah, good luck. Because that's that's I. I've... They're sharing their pain when they do that. It's ex an expression of cognitive dissonance. So, you're like, even if it's... you'll point out their contradiction, they'll still circle jerk back to it two minutes later. And we often describe that as lying. Well, it's definitely something mental. I can't help them. I can just say, like, look, here's what we're we're arguing for. They get confused and don't have any more arguments, and they're just mad. And they're like, dude, I don't care. Think about it a little bit. But I don't know. I mean, it's frustrating. 
If it's frustrating, well, only, only the- allow yourself to be frustrated in the moment. Don't don't let it linger. You know, some people hold these things forever and come back to chat threads over and over again. And you just like just let it go. <laughs> you know, make make your point and piss off. <laughs> Like, yeah, if you don't follow the argument, just give up. It's like, it's fine. You don't understand the point. You lost track. You don't follow. It's okay. Just let it go. You don't have to be mad. You don't have to be so frustrated that we have good questions. There's good flat earth proofs. And the fact that you're confused by it doesn't make us wrong. It just makes been a good few good fun few couple of days i've got to admit this has been a good week i'll do it like a i am recording now by the way so i'm gonna do a quick shout out to my patreons because um what i've been doing incrementally over time is using the funds i get from patreon to buy various bits of equipment or repair things etc etc and uh, this month I've bought a load of sound deadening equipment. So I've bought like bass traps and absorbers and deflectors and all sorts of like foam and built a couple myself and put it all in. Got a whole I, damn studio. Well, that's, that, I'm leading somewhere with this. So <laughs> yes, it does look very much like a studio now, which is the first comment my wife said, it looks like a studio. And you I said, could have. Okay, just bear with me a second. So I said to my wife, do you like it? Do you, do you think it looks okay? And she says, it's not beautiful, but you can think of it as beautiful. <laughs> you can believe. That's enough, dude. That's enough. Just accept. You did. That's a good one. <laughs> She's keeping up with the flat earth debate. That's for sure. Oh, that would just laugh. She's not too It could be worse, Nathan. It could be a lot worse. You have you maybe you found. Well, I showed the ball busters last night on a video call, and I was like, "This is what I've got so far. This is what's got to come. This is what's permanently installed. This is what's temporary." And they're like, "Man, your wife is so tolerant." <laughs> I was like, "No, it just looks a mess now because I'm in the middle of doing it." They're like, "Nah." You got your <laughs> you got your shit together. And then you have somebody who appreciates it. You're mad. What? You have, you have nothing to be mad about in reality. You're. I don't know why they're mad though. That's the. Why who are mad? The ballers. I don't know why anybody would be mad. I don't know why anybody. I don't know. Having your chal- your beliefs challenged is something you know at the core of most people's cognition, and when it's challenged. That causes mental pain. So that's why they're angry. They enjoy, they enjoy the conversation probably more than we do, actually. That's what I found. I, I think do. ballers I love Flat Earth more than they I think you're wrong. I think love to hate it. That's different. A lot of the people who are subscribed to my channel love to hate what we do. That's fine also. They're just my audience, same as anybody else. But it's not that they like the subject. In fact, I think it's quite the antithesis that if there's a fine line between loving something and hating something, very fine, and uh, they're just over the hatred line. So they love to hate the show, the ballers, that is. But, you know. It's most... masochism. Have you... It's masochism. Only I don't know instances. what it is, but they enjoy being. I don't know. I Like, there is something about the attraction they have to it, regardless of how much they hate it. They still want to hear more from it. I like That's like. Maybe it's some closeted ideas of what they really think. I have no idea. But they want. Yeah, I think you're right. In certain instances, it is masochism. Not not always. I think a lot of them is just purely cognitive dissonance. You know, they, they're, they're in those five stages of depression or whatever they call it. Um, loss, that's it, not depression. Five stages of loss. And they're at the, the bargaining slash depression stage. So it's, but that's why first, that's why what you do is is actually hilarious. You more so than anybody is like you probably just roast the shit out of them completely, where it's embarrassing and humiliating. But they're still attracted to it, regardless of how embarrassing their position. Is. 
So I think that it's, it's not only entertaining, it's also very satisfying that no matter how, like, they don't care. They'll just keep coming back. That's, that's not nothing. I think that you're clicking on some level. I think you're wrong again. It's not that they don't care. They care deeply and they want to prove you <laughs> yeah. wrong. And if they, they can't challenge an argument, they'll just display it as hatred towards me personally, with, normally with an ad hominem attack, ideological fallacy, because they can't undo the arguments that are put forward here. So it is, I don't think it's a love, I think it's hate. And I think that they They're only frustrated. because they want to prove me wrong. Well, it, it's they like, are maybe, maybe frustrated. It's probably it's frustration. Like a bu- yeah, frustrated. It's like I can accept match. that. Go on, 10th. Yeah, it's like a boxing match uh, from my viewpoint. So it starts off with a 10-round match. They get beat up. They say, well, look, uh, let me come back and let's go 15 rounds. <laughs> then they get beat up. Then they come back and say, let's go 20 <laughs> rounds. And then they get beat up again. And, and they haven't won one round yet. And now we're up to so many rounds. And they just keep coming back just to score one round, one win. And they can't. <laughs> you have to appreciate it, though. They keep trying. Well, I, I look at n- normalcy of people and daily habits. Most people uh, have some kind of habit that they keep, uh, and it's tied to survival. You know, get a job, pay your bills. You're tired, you go to sleep, you wake up, now you're refreshed, repeat, repeat. Well, what do these people do? Uh, I mean, they waste their time trying to get a win when they can't get a win. Why aren't they doing something constructive with their lives. Why are they on the show? The They're obsessed place? with they flat do. earth, dude. They're obsessed with flat earth. They... Well, that's where I'm getting to. So they have to disprove flat earth. But for what reason? That's the frustration. They cannot disprove it. They're engaged no, with no. it, though. Uh, no, I know. But why are they in the fight? And I think Nathan's alluded to it many times. <laughs> I'd love to hear from them. Why are they so frustrated? Like, you ask them to explain the math, they can't explain the math. You actually, for five minutes, explain anything about ball earth, and they will lose track, or they won't, like, it just, I think they're just believing it, and they can't explain it for themselves, but listening to them is proof that they don't know. know? So, I'd love to hear any person that believes in ballers explain why they believe it it just well if i may interject for a second there's also an emotional attachment that is tied uh i think a lot of people forget that you what they were taught they were taught by people who they trusted and to have somebody challenge people who they cared about and what they had told them it triggers an emotional response I don't think they want to hear that they're wrong, actually. I think it's offensive to them that they hear a different point of view altogether. So I don't think they would... From a, from a sane point of view, you have to ask yourself, why are these guys even here? We're here to learn, and these <laughs> guys are here to... What? I don't understand that part of the song. I've, I've said it loads of times, to defend their cognitive dissonance. So they've got conflicting. If if you do, we've talked about Coriolis quite a lot recently. Just do a Google search for Coriolis and read some of the nonsense. And by the same token, a lot of people have been posting videos from normies that are describing Coriolis. And in each and every instance, they describe a contradiction when they give their explanation that will match the nonsense reams of nonsense that are on Google when you search this subject. So they're just paraphrasing what they think they've understood and don't recognise the contradiction. Now, when you point that contradiction out to them, i.e. you're asserting that with a detailed explanation in the case of these videos, how Coriolis is not actual deflection, it's an apparent force, you're not actually seeing anything really curve, it just seems that way as you spin underneath. In the same video, they'll then go on to detail how Earth is dragging hurricanes into a cyclone. Well, that's obviously a contradiction. But when you point that contradiction out to them, that it suddenly sets off uh, that 
or semi-recognition of the confliction. And that's going to cause a reaction. It might be anger at you. Negative. Yeah, normally. Or, um, <laughs> heaven forbid, an enlightenment immediately, but <laughs> not very often. <laughs> never, maybe. never, never. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It, it normally sets off some something in your brain that isn't matching up correctly. And that's, although it's not physical pain, it's mental pain that they then experience. It's frustrating. And they want to blame the messenger. How dare you put me into this position where I have to recognise a conflict in my own cognition. Right, it's a psychological trigger. Yeah, you're just here to help. You're not trying to, like, you're not arguing against anything else. You're just saying what you're arguing for is wrong. And we can, like, it's okay that you're wrong. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You don't have to defend that shit at all, altogether. No, I agree with the emotional tie. They, the show destroys their fantasy about space and all the movies and all the TV series. And how dare it's you defeating. destroy my fantasy? Hello, Bev. Thanks for joining. I just didn't. The reason I pestered you to join was because you'd left a post in Master B, and I started to read it, and I'm like, I'm getting distracted by this. I have, I can't, I can't. I'm a bloke. I can't dedicate two, two lots of concentration. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it. Um, it's, this is a rare occurrence. I've tried to get um, Jesse to actually talk about this sort of stuff, um, and the surveyors. And they so don't seem to want to, but uh, he's doing a special tomorrow uh, where he's going to be asking us where our measurements are. It's a bit of a mind trick flip that, the, that he's going to try and do. Okay, um, talk me through it. What's he doing? I know you've just summarized it, but explain it in detail. Well, he's um, they're saying that their surveyors are the guys that get the measurements. <clears throat> and suggesting that, you know, the main surveyor can measure uh, non-parallel plumb lines and, you know, all, all sort of weird things. Um, so uh, up until now, I'd never actually heard them say that there was a curve, but somebody showed me um, the measurements he did for the Lake Pontchartrain Bridge, and it shocked me, actually, uh, what they've got. Because there is a measurement of curvature hidden away in there that I don't know whether you can, you're aware of it. Did you want me to present this? This is the picture with sound. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's his, uh, the, the one picture in the middle is the one with the circle. That is um, the height of Lake Pontchartrain Bridge in the middle. Um, so that's the amount of curvature he... Um, I don't know, his model uh, predicts once he does it. But, I mean, you can see him. He he goes, if you watch that video, he goes through it um, and he, he marks all of the points all the way along it. And there's there's no rise or, or anything. It's a straight line. So it only turns into that curve once he puts them through his computer program. Now, one of the clips in there is where he says that Walter Bislane has took his measurements, his data that he got when he was driving over the top of the bridge in his car and uh, developed a computer program, like a software thing, to get that picture to match Soundly's um, picture that he took with the camera. That sounds like trash. Mm. That sounds made up. Yeah, you, you watch it. I mean, that, that, that okay, video, well, I put the... Uh, I was yeah, going to say, you've trimmed clip out the clips nicely, so I've got it presented. I'll start the live show, and then if you want to go through it, that'd be, that'd be marvellous. Yeah, yeah, brilliant.
Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by 10th Man, Righteous Force, and a whole bunch of people in Discord, along with Bev Try Thinking, who's going to do a bit of a presentation to kick us off once we've done the housekeeping. So we'll rattle through housekeeping, but first and foremost, welcome one and all. Good morning, all. Good morning. morning. Hello, hello. Any signs of a physical geometric sphere edge formerly known as Earth Curve? Not from the causeway. Not Not from the causeway. We'll come to that. There's no (laughs) curvature in a horizontal. I had something about something from horizontal. Yeah, there's no no curvature in horizontal. No, that's correct. Any signs of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? Nope. None. Any? Hey, chocolate saying? Uh, Hello. Yeah. Any yeah. signs of an axis? No. Morning, guys. <laughs> no signs. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? Well, it's over mm. there, according to Arwen, but no distance measurement has been uh, formed. That's true. Any scientific evidence of gravity? Do you really expect there to be any? There's, I've never... It's, it's not me it's expecting. It's funny, because that, that assertion is made all the time. Say, you would think it would be kind of easy peasy to just find it. it. <laughs> it's not us asserting but, a causal no. relationship. It's not us saying science. It's them asserting a causal relationship and them asserting they have science for it. We're just saying, okay, let's see it. Yeah, they should walk you through it. I've never heard anybody walk, any person who believes in the globe ever walk themselves through the equation. Equations aren't. Try it, hold on, hold on. Not equations. That's that's mathematics. Well, they, that's what gravity is. It's conceptual mathematics. It's make believe. They can't sure. walk you through it though. At at all. Yeah, well, while you're right, it is mathematics in in only abstract format maths. But they assert it's our reality, and our reality is based in physical, actual nature, and that's dealt with in physics dealing with the physical. So we want to see an experiment that proves this causal relationship they assert, and also banner science. So that's definitely not unreasonable. And you're correct. Your, your rebuttal is, is part of your answer. Hey, Arwen, it's it's abstract only, not real, mathematical. Hey, Arwen. Yeah. That's why it's fun to listen to. I wish they would explain it. It would be entertaining to hear them try to explain that. I'm going to stop you again. No, no, I don't want an explanation. I want to show it <laughs> physically. You you can't, you can't do that. They will. I'd love to hear him try. That's all. You're absolutely correct. This is a great conversation. <laughs> However, they would still assert that it's something in our physical reality. Do they not? That's I know. That's why it's ridiculous. I I don't know. I'd love to hear them try. You try to get them to do that. They won't. They won't even. Well, if you're lucky, Just, they might they might offer you a hundred year out of date rhetoric about a quasi <laughs> experiment called the Cavendish. You can just let go of a mic. 
I haven't got a mic to let go of. What are you talking about? Do I have to pick it up first? Well, he's saying, he's saying, of course you do, but he's saying that they don't show it, but they do show it. They show it in such a clumsy way. They pick up a mic and then drop it and call it gravity. <laughs> Who is that convincing to? That's that's an argument. I can do that. Come on. 90 million people who watch Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> I could do it. Gravity so bitches. I was say 99% of the world. Western world. You got... You've got that word all over the place in every genre. You got it in sports. You've got it in schools. You've got it in everyday life. I was explaining something to a person about my uh, water tanks up on the hill, and they said, "Oh, is it gravity fed?" And I go, "No, the well pumps up the water." <laughs> <laughs> No, it works perfectly without that assumption. You don't have to assume gravity. That's you do realize we're in the minority, right? Sadly. Let's move on. Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? Not to the strict scientific method, no. Just observe and declare. Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? Happy to move on without on any this answer. One, Nathan. Yeah, it's all right. I'm happy to move on without an answer to that one today. We had a like, long discussion about it yesterday, so that's fine. Okay, so any evidence hollow of the priest? Go on, sorry. Go on. No, I was just saying hollow Earth can be still real on flat Earth. But that's a whole other. <laughs> you don't want to prove fo Hollow Earth. Just it's a lot of. What? I've got nothing against anything. I don't care. You know, I don't care if Hollow Earth turns out to be real. But I'd just like to see if it's being claimed some evidence for it. I haven't got a. I couldn't care less either way. I did. I didn't care if it was a ball. You know, I don't care. Literally. However, nonsense and bullshit that can be uh, exposed here. As Quantum Eraser puts it, that's the purpose. No, no, I believe that. That's fair. That's fair enough. But what I'm saying is that Hollow Earth is uh, is a religious, it's an old tradition of understanding even where hell comes from. So we've understood that caverns can exist, and it can still be flat. It's, there's, they're not mutually exclusive. What I'm saying is that they both can exist. And there's like a historic and religious... Okay, but if I put an argument to you that it's possible for parallel universes to exist, excluding any heliocentric paradigm whatsoever, and I describe it as planes of existence because we're on a plane and it's not mutually yeah. exclusive with flat Earth, you can be together with our flat plane of existence. In fact, it's quite, you know, complementary, which suddenly my bullshit assertions of parallel universes be in any way validated because it's not mutually exclusive that's theoretical i couldn't disprove that but what i could prove is that if you dug into the earth you would you would encounter a different medium it would be the earth medium like it would be different than water it'd be different than air it would be its own world. um what's that smell exist. we know there's mm, things I, that are I, caverns I, I, I sense bullshit can you can you show me this, <laughs> this i mean it could be bullshit no 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 I, it absolutely could be bullshit i'm just saying I'm 400 feet deep on my property, and there's water, a big reservoir of water. So it's not just Earth. There's lots of things. Well, they say there's under Earth water, like oceans, apparently, under the Earth's crust. Yes. Apparently. I'm not making... The under ocean. The, the super yeah, fresh water reservoir that uh, Gaddafi tapped into in the secret water channels that he built. The I'm water, they say that? that if you dig far enough, you'll always find water. You'll always find an ocean, and that's just an aspect of Earth. It could be hollow. It still could be. Well, technically, most rock types are porous to water in some way. So water reservoirs typically rest on rock, and they'll go through sediments and all that, and that's how you dig in wells. But if there's like more room 
somewhere in between that rock, then eventually water will very, very, very slowly seep through. It will be like a super compact water filter. That water is going to be as pure as it gets. Where my well is in well over, pun intended, 400 mm. feet of water, and my pump is sitting 300 plus feet under that water. So even in droughts where the table might drop 10 feet at the most, even in California, you still got over 300 plus feet of water. So uh, water's got to go somewhere. It finds its level, right? Yeah, but that's still, like, you can still have underground wells and oceans. You can have whole different, whole underground worlds and it'd still be. Hold on. You, 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 you're doing this little extrapolation trick where you go, we can have underwater reservoirs and underwater bodies of water and rivers and all that I can accept, you know, and Arwen could potentially qualify an example of it where, did you say Gaddafi? You know, but maybe this is qualifiable. I'm not even going to attempt it. I don't think it's. I think it's that important. It's fairly moot. But by the same token, what isn't moot is where you extrapolated out. Therefore, there could be worlds underneath us, right? That's a fairly big step. I mean, it's it's not that much of a big step. If you can hypothesize that people probably live underground and there's probably different environments, it's not that far fetched to think that you know people have probably tried to live underground before. You know, it's not just make believe completely but it doesn't dismiss flat earth at all you can have they're both complementary of each other actually so i mean it's not that Just give me a second my hair my kid's hair is caught in a dress there you go sausage go on right sorry where were we i wasn't paying attention for the last 20 seconds i'm really sorry Flat Earth con or Hollow Earth confirmed. <laughs> Hollow Earth confirmed. Okay, moving <laughs> Hollow on. Earth Hollow Flat Earth. <laughs> My man Hollow Earth, bro. <laughs> I missed the demonstrable, repeatable. Welcome to Hollow. I, I heard hypothesis at some point, or hy hypothesize. We'll let you off with a colloquialism and move on to any evidence of the presupposition. Just let it go. It's all right. Hollow Earth. Move on. It's fine. <laughs> well, you've not proved it, but if you want to dwell here, I'm uh, happy to. Welcome to Hollow Earth. <laughs> if you say well, so. It's a, it's a very hollow <laughs> argument, but let's move on. I, I, like, very... I like the optimism. Any evidence of the R value? Earth radius, the presupposition of Earth as a sphere. Black Swan. No. Hey, Flat Swan. Black Swan. Hey, Flatsoid. What's the radius of the hollow? Hold on, Arwen. Hey, Flatsoid, can you hear us? No sound, yeah, amigo. Oh, yeah, there we go. Bad internet. Hey, hey, good to have you. Long time no see. How are things? Hey, guys. It's been a long time. Nice to have you. Sure. Just got one more housekeeping question. Any evidence that you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon for all the fundamentalist religious zealots who believe the sky is a vacuum? No evidence for that, Nathan. Uh, well, it's, it's just, just low pressure. It's, it's a vacuum and fly. <laughs> Why don't they argue against that? Did we get a response from Flatsoid? Uh, was he trying to say something? I heard him like barely for a second. Yeah, he was pretty quiet. I heard him say hello though. Right, Bev, are you there? Did you have something on your screen share that you wanted me to show before I pop up the stills and video that you shared in Discord, uh, in Skype? On screen share? Are you sharing oh, yeah. something on screen now? Am I sharing something? I don't know. You, yeah, clearly you don't want that on then. Okay, right. Do you want me to pop yeah. your... <laughs> You're still on. Yeah, sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. That's okay. It's yeah. your uh, projection. Oh, my camera? Yeah. Oh, no, that's that shouldn't be on. But it's all right. It's only, it's only my wall. Okay, um, so I've got your first still up, and then we'll move on to the first video, second video, and third video, as you tell me. Well... Um, yeah, well, I, I didn't put them in order particularly. Um, 
basically what it is is Jesse Kozlowski is gonna is is making an appearance and they're doing a special with all of the surveyors are getting together on um Jose's tomorrow. So you've got Sean G. Did you know he was a surveyor? Um yeah, Sean Sean G. Uh I think George Natchuk's going on there and Jesse and they may have some more people on them. Um and they're gonna go and ask for where are the measurements or they're gonna show their measurements. So thought it'd be a good idea to let every get everybody up to speed in case they don't let me go on and have a word with them on what the measurements that he's actually done. Now there's one I've titled that he he came he uh, this is Jesse Kozlowski and the video he did was called um, checking the I've got it here already. First video is demonstrating Walter Bislin's radius calculator. Now he um, Flat, puts a exactly. bit of <laughs> level and curved. Yeah, yeah. He so it's actually big... amazingly level considering the distance that they had oh, to build this thing. I'm telling you, it's 20, really for twenty-four miles. They're very consistent, don't you think? It's awesome. It is a. It's a. It's an amazing. It is an amazing piece, piece of architecture. Of construction. Really, yeah. It exactly. is. I, the way I phrase it is, it is a monument uh, to the curvature of the earth. It is it a really monument. Is, to it's the a man-made monument. Earth. It I really totally is. agree with that. It really is. So, and you can't like make I, this I, up. I, I mean, it's just there. It is. I mean, the, 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 the you know, I collected the data, processed it, output it. That's it. Um, you know, here and all this is just me trying to create views so you can see it. Um, so there. Oh my God. <laughs> and that voice is familiar. Uh, What's that? I, I guy guys, 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 guys. Hello. Arwin and chocolate. Sorry. Thank you. Go ahead, Bev. Um, right. So, uh, like, I can't remember which order I put all of these in that, the these are just some sort of um he what he did initially was he he strapped a piece of gps equipment onto the roof of his car and then drove over lake punch train bridge and this um gps equipment logger or whatever um logged a load of uh heights every 10 meters uh, I this think. Is your <laughs> sorry my bad and uh um, he yeah he did that um, and then he all of the coordinates and all of the things he shows uh, as he's going over it now there's one that I put in I think it was the last video that I put in it's it's a, like a it's a video I think I cut all of the sound out of it but I got my lad to um, highlight some of the distances um, that he logs as he's showing it. So you'll see as he's going across, it's four point something, four point eight meters for, uh, you know, and it's all of these distances are all the same all the way along as he goes on the bridge, apart from where the rise is and it goes up to about 16 meters uh, in some bits with the rise. So that's basically what he's done. He's got a, a data logger and strapped it to the top of his car and it's uh, logged a few coordinates as he's gone across he's he's then got um this these set of coordinates and put them into a computer to manufacture i would say this curve um within the model um so yeah the, the first one is is where he he logs all of them details and it shows him driving over and that's um do you want me to play that the second video? Did Walter you want that Bislane's radius calculator. Did you want me to play that? That's the second video you've shared, right? Um, no, the second video, I think, is from... There's two... Uh, is the three videos that I've posted. Yeah, the first one I've already played, or the first one that was shared, the one that you were right. just describing with him showing all the data logs, that's playing now without sound. Okay. And there's that's only the, one That more. was the third one, right. 
So the second one would be um, where he, I think he explains how Walter Bisley makes the computer model in order to manufacture the curve to make it look like Sound Lee's uh, picture that everybody's seen. Okay, shall I play that one now? It, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is your <laughs> data that Walter yes. has taken, and he yes. has rendered it in a 3D space. Yes. And this is what we're getting. Yes. And Very the, interesting. Yeah. It is, really. It's just awesome. So um, these are the X. He took the XYZ coordinates. He wrote his own program to convert them back to Latin long. He computed. He, I mean, he's done absolute geodetic uh, software writing. I mean, it's like he's got all the calculations in here. It's awesome. So, well, you know, here's the side view. Interesting okay. that, huh? Did you want me to put the last screenshot that you shared up? Uh, because oh, we see right. it. Yeah, we that's, see, that's when he talks about a chord. He, only, he leaves it on screen for a second and takes it away, not surprisingly. Um, but yeah, he talks about that chord. And that would make that the height at 28.4 something meters is the height of the supposed uh, bulge across the lake. In order for you to believe that the bulge is there that way, you have to completely ignore the logical problem of the bulge that would be um, along the shoreline um, everywhere across the water. It's, you know, they can't see the logical consistency of, of putting that bulge there. I, I, hold on, I've just got a quick question, Bev. In the, the mathematics, the bulge, is the geometric horizon. Yes. That rises 28 <laughs> metres from one end. No, no, no. What you're describing, I might be wrong, is, yeah. is them describing the bulge in the frame of this picture that rises up. But that isn't what the bulge is in their mathematics. The bulge is the horizon. Yeah. It, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, is the bulge in this the horizon? In the picture, well I, I th I, well, I don't know. I think they get stuck, don't they? Because there's a re there's a reality view that everybody sees, and then there's th this um, model thing that they have to. No, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. Let me just ask you the question again: Is the bulge being described the horizon? Yes or no? That they are describing would be the the limit of your view wouldn't it if you so is that a physical, on, on their model yes so you're saying what they are describing and demonstrating in what is on screen now is a geometric physical sphere edge horizon yes that mathematically that's what they're trying to describe yes no no no, no. what was i keep saying what we see what's no. in the picture though yeah in in the picture yeah in reality are we seeing a physical geometric bloody hell if i'm really having to lead you here <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah i don't know i can only are we go seeing with a geometric are we seeing a geometric physical sphere edge horizon formerly known as earth curve or not that's the question do they think how we're doing that or i don't know I'm not seeing a curve. <laughs> I'm just trying to point out that, that what they think they're doing is within a model framework. You know, they, they take reality and then put it onto a model to explain the model. But obviously, that model that they're putting it on doesn't match reality in any way. But so, yes, in, 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 to answer your question, they think, they definitely think that that is a bulge that's there geometrically. 
but and they that... can't tell you that because it's not actually there. My question was, is that bulge a horizon? Um, I would say not because you can see the water tower in the back of the picture. And that that water tower is 28 miles further and it, it's huge. Have you got anything else to add on this, Bev? If not, I'll give you a big thanks. No, well, just wait and see what happens tomorrow. When... Sure, I'm, I'm in no doubt we'll get your full commentary on it, probably next week. <laughs> Thank you. Is that a picture I, that's on screen now? I haven't heard now? something so cool uh, as it's like a monument built to, to the curvature of the Earth. It's been a long time since I heard that. <laughs> so that's kind of funny to me. We were uh, actually oh, thinking just, of... Um, just one second, sorry, up. Bev. Being being challenged by Rumpus. Says that oh, the bulge oh, is not, not the again. same. Sorry, just let me finish my sentence. Rumpus is from the chat now stating that the bulge is not the same as the geometric horizon. Of course. <laughs> Well, according to him, we we don't we don't have a geometric horizon. I, I'm starting to think that Rumpus doesn't understand what a geometric horizon is. Well, I was going to say that was going to be my next question, Arwin. Well put. Is it not the geometric horizon that we do see, or not the geometric horizon that we don't see? Please, can you answer? <laughs> <laughs> is that picture on the screen now, the model one? showing that water curving that way under the bridge and then when I look at the picture the water's not curving are they serious about this okay cool as you say Bev watch this space thank you very much for bringing it to our attention I'm sure that'll generate some interest in the next week was, well we actually I was it. thinking of asking because he said there that it was a monument to curvature I was thinking of asking the people that actually built the bridge whether we could make a model of it, you know, like a two-scale model, and then to find out whether they thought uh, there was any curvature in the model. That would be interesting to find out, wouldn't it? So, yeah, I'll, I'll be doing making a few phone calls like that. Nathan, can you hear me? Say that again, Tenth Man. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm just a little distracted. No, no, I, the Water of Bislin calculator, doesn't that take into account um, the thing from uh, Andrew Thomas Young, 1.22 at the observer height? Isn't that built into it? That's just based on the standard model. That's just R that gives you that. Right, but that's part of the Walter Bislin and all the other Earth curve calculators, correct? Yes, they're all based on the standard model. They're all based on this R value. So then what is Rumpus talking about in chat about bulge and no bulge? Bulge and no bulge. What you mean is double speaking from chat. I just thought it was funny to laugh about. I didn't realize we were going to linger on it. I just, I just wanted to have a laugh. Oh, I haven't looked at chat. I'm just going off of what you said. But uh, again, he, he can't even debate that issue on face value. And now we've got a bridge that supposedly is a monument to Earth's curvature. And they Indeed. can't even show the R. Planet New Orleans. Right on. As I say, I didn't expect we were going to dwell. I thought we were going to round out at the end of that because there's not any more to talk about till it actually happens, right? I guess. Well, I'm going to be going over um, these videos that he's done. I mean, I had a quick skim through it yesterday and I was 
I was laughing quite heavily, to be honest, at some of the things he says. Um, yeah, so we'll. I'll be going that, over that it conversation tonight. Conversation took place yesterday. No, no, that that's old. That's over a year old. Uh, the Walter Bislane's oh, calculator okay. and the the curve thing with Soundly and. I was about um, to say because yeah, yeah that, that, that's gone. <laughs> well, that? no, he's he's Thank bringing you, it out again. It, it's coming out again tomorrow. The, what the, the geometric one. horizon? That's yeah, dead and buried. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. The, they rise the from the dead. You know that. Yeah, the surveyors that measure it are, are being brought out tomorrow. They've Me they've had to call out the big guys. Yeah, yeah our Me zombies always come back. Wait, measurement of what? The the curvature, right? You know, curvature. You know, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the actual surveyors that I've been asking for ages is level horizontal. Well, the surveyors are coming out. The geodetic <laughs> surveyors. <laughs> That's the first thing I heard was the oh, whole level and curved and it's yeah. beautiful and it's a monument. I was like, oh my god, what am I listening to right now? <laughs> level and curved, huh? Yeah, so, bent level yeah. surveyors are coming out to play. <laughs> oh, he's in the chat now, Rumpus is here. Hey, Rumpy. Oh, check out Sean Hawkins in chat. Where's your can container, man? You claim we need a container to hold our atmosphere in. Where is it? Validate your claim. That's Sean Hawkins and Joe. Yeah, the horizon is not the same as the bulge. The horizon is slightly before the bulge. The horizon we do see, oh, or the horizon we don't see. <laughs> Sorry, horizon is a point where the you? land and sky meet. Can't be behind That's something. That's the horizon. Yeah. <laughs> the horizon, yeah. The horizon we don't see. Oh, well, if we don't see it, it's not a horizon. Well, we do see the apparent horizon. That's exactly what the definition of apparent horizon is. So it's not the geometric that? one, then. They're not the geometric well, one. How many times do you have to be told that, Nathan? The apparent horizon is the one that you see. And the <laughs> geometric one is the one we don't see, because if we don't see it, it's not a horizon. It's not a visual horizon, but it is So we don't visible. see it, oh, so it's so not a horizon. Not a horizon. I just repeat that to you, Rumpus. I know you're going to try and talk through me, so I have muted you. So if we do not see this position where the land and sky or sea and sky meet, then it is not a horizon. Now, I appreciate this horizon exists in your model as a horizon, but if we don't see it in reality, it's not a horizon. Oh, right, you've unmuted me. Okay, what, do you, what were you talking about? Oh, didn't you hear me? No, I muted you. Oh, really? So you didn't want to listen to me? Let's see if I can tell you I, without you talking I, I... through me. I'll try again. Let's see if you yeah. talk through me. Yeah, try again. Yeah. Well, well, you've I'm already started you. talking through me, haven't you, Rumpus, by giving me permission when I've just told you that I'm going to start to talk. So I'll put you on mute again and see if this is merely an, a tactic so you don't have to listen to me. Yeah, there he goes on server mute. I'll repeat it for the audience's benefit. It's no worries, you coward. Well, you don't listen to me, you'd prefer to talk through this. Or mute me so you don't have to listen to it, you coward. No worries. The audience is hearing me calling you a coward. You're not listening to me calling you a coward, which you are, because you don't want to reply to my demolition of the R value and the very reason you need to roll out these big guns, these geodetic surveyors, is because we've destroyed the R value, obliterated it. And when I point out that your R value gives you a horizon you do not see and therefore is not a horizon, you're going to stick your fingers in your ears, aren't you, you little bitch? Good. That's okay. All the audience are listening to you, not wanting to listen to me. And I'm muting you so that you have to listen to me. But you don't want to. If you're off mute, you'll talk through me so you don't have to respond. And if you're on mute, you'll put your fingers in your ears so you don't have to listen either. You're a coward and a bitch, Rumpus. Let's make it plain. You have no rebuttal to this. That's why you've stuck your fingers in the ears. And if I were to leave you unmuted, you wouldn't listen. You'd talk through it as you have done by giving me permission after me telling you that I'm about to tell you that which you cannot respond to. This point, ladies and gentlemen of the audience, is the death of their model. That is why he cannot address it. And needs a little game that he's going to play. And I guarantee you, he will not, cannot respond to this point no matter what the circumstances in terms of whether or not he's got his fingers in his ears or the ability to listen he won't listen okay, to the yeah. fact that if it's not visible it is not a horizon 
and therefore yes, only if they t they go told you audience he cannot listen to this he's talking through it so i'll try again let's see how many attempts okay, that's the second attempt go let's ahead. see how many attempts rumpus has to obfuscate the death of his model let's see how how big a coward he is i'll try an that's three attempts so well, now you're listening are you fun boy i'm listening yeah if it's not visible as a demarcation between either land or sea and sky, then it is not a horizon. The horizon that exists labelled as horizon marked with an X in your model does not exist in reality. It is not a horizon. This debunks your geometric model with its R-based geometric horizon that we cannot see. That cross does not indicate the visual horizon. It says horizon on it. Yes, yeah, a geometric horizon. It's a horizon that we cannot see and does not exist in reality. However, it's definitely labelled horizon in your model. It's describing something that should be a demarcation between land and sea. That's what a horizon is. It's labelled as such. However, it does not exist beyond the labelling of a horizon in your geometric, now debunked model. It's not labelled as such. It's, it's called horizon in your model, marked with an X, labelled horizon. It's the geometric horizon. It's the tangent point with a tangent line you can't draw anymore. Another debunking of your geometric model with a horizon that doesn't exist beyond your geometric model. It's not where the sky meets the land. The cross. We know it only exists in your model. If it was where the sky and land meet, it would be a horizon. Now, it is labelled horizon in your now dead debunked geometric model. It just isn't a point where the land and sky meet, therefore isn't actually a horizon. It's only labelled incorrectly as a horizon in your now debunked geometric model. It doesn't exist in reality. Uh, you're talking through me again, aren't you, Fundy? Is this painful? How do my nuts oh, taste? How do my balls taste? Do my balls taste nice? How do they taste? Enjoy my salty nuts, you coward. You have to talk through this, don't you, you coward? And I love it. It's the death of your model, Rumpus. Enjoy the taste of my balls. You're talking through me, aren't you, Fundy? It's all you can do while I destroy your model. Bye-bye, globe. No geometric horizon. It's not a visible point, therefore we can't see it. Oh, only exists in your can model, I Rumpus. I know you've got to talk through it because you've got answer? no response to it. <laughs> can I answer? You've already right, answered. The cross that you were talking about. You've already answered. About. Can I answer? I'll answer you. Your question to me, what can I answer? You have already given us an answer. You have affirmed that it is not visible, therefore not a horizon as labelled in your geometric model. Did you stick your fingers in your ears for that one, bitch? Oh, yeah. Oh, you've unmuted me, excellent, so I've no idea what you've been saying. But anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll I know, bitch. Question. That's why I'm going to stick you on mute while you talk through me again. You asked me if you had permission to speak and answer. I pointed out to my audience you'd already answered. You have affirmed that the horizon in your model, marked with an X, labelled horizon, cannot be seen in reality. Therefore, is not a horizon and is fundamental to your geometric model and claim of a globe Earth. Your model's dead. All you can do is stick your fingers in your ears while I teabag you and your model. If you're going to stick your fingers in your ears, there's no point you being here. Get lost. Whoever's in charge of Discord, move him elsewhere. He's not playing fair. Doesn't want right, to so join in with the conversation the if he's got to respond to something. Do you, Rumpus? Am I glad to answer? No, uh, you, yeah, uh, ask you me that question again. Am I allowed to answer? Yeah, you've already given an answer, the you pathetic answer, weasel. The geometric horizon. Sorry, why is he being taken off mute? He asked me a question. He asked me if he was allowed to answer, and I'm answering him. I know he's going to talk through his question to me. Let's take him off mute and see if he talks through my answer to his question. You have already answered me, Rumpus. The geometric Ah, uh, so he is going to talk through me. Fundy mute button time. That's why I'm muting him, ladies and gentlemen. I was answering his question he phrased to me. He asked me, question mark at the end, am I, that's a question, allowed to answer? 
and I'm answering that question. He won't allow me. That's why I've got to shut him up and he'll put his fingers in his ears while I destroy his model over and over again and go, la, 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 la. Yeah? Fun. But I'm going to answer him. Whether or not he wants to interrupt my answering of his question, am I allowed to answer this question? You've already answered. We can't see it. Therefore, it's not our horizon. You don't need to now change your answer. Give me a double speak answer or say we can see it when you've already answered. I know your answer. Your answer destroys your model. Kick him out. You're on mute, so I've no idea what you've been saying. That's why so I'm going to kick you out horizon, now. That's why I'm about to remove you. Not where the That's why I'm going to remove you because you don't want to respond to me because I'm teabagging your religion. Therefore, you're going to absolutely ignore every word of it or talk through it. Or bitch that you're being muted so you can't talk through it. But I'm going to confirm over and over again that you've answered my question. Yeah? Am I going to get a chance to answer? You already have. Can we see it? No, we can't see it. It's not visible. Therefore, not a horizon. But it's labelled as a horizon in your geometric model. With a little X and the word horizon. But it only exists in that model. Not in reality. So bye-bye if you don't want to respond to that. It's not going to be me saying it five times, you never responding to it, and then you getting to make up some shite that you haven't already answered, answered or been asked. You have answered the question in regards to whether or not we can see this quote-unquote horizon. And if it's a quote-unquote horizon, it'll be a position that demarcates land, sea, and sky. So that's what a horizon is, and it isn't what your geometric model says a horizon is. That's only existence in one place. Now, for the audience's benefit, there is no rebuttal to this. It's the end of heliocentrism. That's why we've got this little dance. Because it's the death of the globe. It's pretty much over. I would love to hear them argue that. But it is over. Like, there's... <laughs> You, you just heard them argue it. They're fighting for a horizon that's not a horizon. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. That, no, that can't be it. That's what he just said. But that's literally it, though. That's, that's so simple. sad, though. That's... They're telling you themselves, we can't see the geometric horizon. We've never seen it due to us having an atmosphere. So how in the hell did they ever measure it? And how would you even call it a horizon, being that it's defined as the visible demarcation between land and sea and sky? So, yep, that's that's a wrap for that model. Yeah. So, what if you got? If you haven't got anything to respond to that with, you're gonna moan or put your fingers in the ears when it's phrased concisely. And what's being phrased exactly? Well, the death of the globe. So, Rumpus hasn't got a response to that, other than to moan and talk through me. Weird, well, quite... you got some guy saying, oh, we've never seen a geometric horizon. And another guy saying, oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's a monument to Earth's curvature, a.k.a. the geometric horizon, a.k.a. the horizon that we've never seen, can't see, is not, never possible to be seen. If you don't follow that double speak from these clowns, <laughs> then that's how you get fooled. Would Just very quickly, you know, your mint means. Jazza, do you have a geometric horizon in your model? Geometric is a measurement. So if you're talking in terms of a horizon, it's a distance that you can't see. So it's going to remain constant. The, the closer you get to it, it's going to remain that same distance away from you. So you're never going to get to it. You said you can't oh, see really? it. You just said you can't see it, though. <laughs> Ill. When did I say you what can't see it? Uh, can you not interrupt him in Discord, please? Go ahead, Jazz. No, I'm just saying geometric means a measurement, a distance. Yeah, you said that. Um, and if you what, if you're measuring something, you're gonna need to, you're gonna need to see it if you're measuring it, aren't you, Jazz? Okay, so if you're on a beach and you're looking out at the horizon and you're five and a half feet six feet above the horizon if you're six feet high it's going to be slightly further away that distance is going to remain that distance 
the further you go, if you go and try and chase it, that distance is going to remain that distance away from you. I understand. So to summarise that point in uh, mathematical terms, you'd say if the Earth was a sphere with a radius of 39.59 miles, then every distance to horizon would be no more than 1.2 times the observer's height in feet. That sort of statement? Um, if you want to use that number, I don't know the exact numbers, but if you want to use that number wherever you look, if you're in the middle of the ocean, 360 degrees, then yes, that number you just used would be what you would be seeing. Yeah, that's the geometry of Earth as a claimed sphere. If the horizon is a physical geometric sphere edge you can measure but you're stating that you can't see it but also saying that we're going to be measuring it that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense just nathan if you're on a ball sorry we're begging the question now are we there's no land sorry if we're begging the question then that's the end of this conversation well not really because you just can't deal with it no we just don't beg the question here jazz maybe you didn't know that rule Okay, let's say we're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean where there's no land for fucking thousands and thousands of miles. No need to swear. Okay, we're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. I'm with you. It's really tranquil. It's very calm today. Okay. So when you go out, the number of miles that you that you said, I can't remember what that was. One, two, what doesn't doesn't even matter. Let's call it three miles. Let's, let fuck. Let's call it fourteen miles. Whatever 360 degrees, we call it a radial in aviation, 360 degrees. If you're in the middle of the ocean and you can't see anything, it all looks the same. You can't see shit. That's fascinating. And your point is? Well, I'm waiting to see what your point is. You're, you're the one talking. <laughs> <laughs> You're making the point. Argue for it. So, the, the point of this, Jazz, is that your model requires a physical, visible, measurable, geometric sphere edge horizon formerly known as Earth Curve. And you don't have it anymore. Exactly, we've which debunked you need it. a reference for Earth Curve, don't you? Yeah, we've debunked it. It's, you need it's a argument reference. called the Black Swan. No, you haven't. Yeah, we have. You, you just can't. Go. You just, <laughs> yeah, we have, bro. You just can't that's what I just said. If you're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, would we? You he have... didn't say anything. You didn't have a point. I'm supposed to answer your word salad nonsense diatribe about nothing. There's no answer to be given. You just said you need a reference. You have no reference in my example. The horizon is the reference we're talking about. Do you have a horizon in this example? Shit for brains. I think you do. So shut you up. You're you done here. Shut up. Earth horizon Shh. curvature. Shut up. In my example. You do not have one because the Earth is fucking massive. Sorry, stop swearing. Horizon is what this argument is about. In this depiction that you've given us, you'll have a horizon, a demarcation point between land and sky. Or in this case, sea Nathan. and sky. Nathan, Earth curvature. Yeah, that would be based on an R value that we've debunked with this argument called the Black Swan. No. If the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 39.59 miles, then every distance to horizon can be no more than 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height in feet. And these Black Swan images demonstrate beyond all certitude that the horizon is way beyond any geometric capability of a sphere edge horizon. Therefore, the Earth is definitely not a sphere. We have debunked the R value. Now, I appreciate that while I've been explaining this to you, Jazz, you've been talking the entire time so Discord can't hear. Am I correct, Discord? That's just what I heard. Okay. I can't hear anything but him. Yep. Bye-bye, Jazzaconda. You're arguing. You're not making any points. What, what Jazzaconda's just done for the audience's benefit is talk through every word of my concise demolition of his R value he said we didn't debunk. So he said we didn't debunk it. We said, yeah, we did. Not just Ipsy Dixit, we're going to explain it, but he wouldn't allow that. He talked through it. The audience didn't hear. I shut down the Discord line so that you could hear my concise rendition of the Black Swan argument. But Jazz wasn't going to allow that because it debunks his model. So what he needs is the ability to talk through that. So it can't be heard by an audience. No. Bye-bye. He wasn't even arguing your point. He was just talking through you. I think that's what we always see what happens with them. They just talk and that's what they do. It's a great way of... Well, he put himself in the middle of the ocean.
But then expect that Nathan to give the answer he, why he put he, himself. He there. said, he said, you have no reference in my example. Like, bro, that's your bro, example. <laughs> you have no reference in your example. Uh, just, just uh, 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 the guy in the chat. Okay. Sorry, it's just because it's on screen now. So when we were talking in the pre-show about the different stages of loss that they go through, I just happened to have them on screen. So we've got denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. Well, many of them, normies, general Joe that just cursory comes across the flat earth subject will be in denial immediately, regardless of what's put to him. Now, the people who appreciate a point that we might have made or have challenged their cognition will get angry immediately. Now, the people who go beyond that are in the debate with us. They're the people at the bargaining stage. And some of them, like Conspiracy Cats, check out Haunted Houses video, are at the depression stage, losing sleep, worrying about it and what might be if it all turns out to be the case, which it is. And then finally, the acceptance stage. So many of the people we deal with here are either at the depression stage, dealing with cognitive pain, or at the bargaining stage, debate. Right? Happy days. What about Rumpus huh? and Sanic, uh, Nathan? What category they are? They don't argue uh, anymore. The globe shills. I don't know. No idea. They just shill for the globe. They're they're zealots, huh? They're like, they're not here to listen to any arguments, aren't they? They don't argue anymore. They, they don't. I've they talked to them. He have doesn't to argue. Be. These guys don't debate flat Earth anymore. They just try to describe things that I don't know. Yeah, that's why they do. Uh -huh. They don't show up anymore. But that's why they don't. Do they have a script, though. So if they say something and you try to debunk it, they don't listen to the debunk. They just go back and tell you, no, you don't understand, and this is what it is. They get confused and leave, and that's the end of it, right? And then they'll come back and say the same thing again and get confused and leave. Speaking of saying the same things again. Hey, Zanik. Is he here? Oh, I've, mis oh, I've, misread, I've misread it because it's on the tiny text. I don't think it is Zanik, is it? <laughs> Someone else. Sorry, whoever that is. Zodiac. Zodiac. I'm surprised he's not here, actually. I thought he would come in. It's about that. It's sort of timing, isn't it? <laughs> How do you say your name, How my friend? Z Zod Zodark, is it? Uh, oh, Zodiac. Zodiac. Yeah, he's, I'm not Zanik. He's, Sorry. He's, he's one of the mods on 24 7, so I know Zodiac is cool. Zodiac. It's just on my Discord. It's tiny little writing. I'll get it, man. What's up, Zodiac? What's going on, bro? It's How are you guys show. doing? Good show. Good show. Nice round out to the week. No complaints here. So far Nathan, as... how did they measure a thought experiment? No. <laughs> What's your independent variable? Hey, Mo, man. Did thought? Hear me? Good. Mo, man, can yeah, we hear you, Alvin. Uh, Why uh, is nobody answering? It's like, am I talking in the background? Because sometimes I feel like I'm in another room. Not at all. That is. Answering what? In outer space. <laughs> answering what, Arwin? Yeah, Arwin. Answering what? Hmm? I, don't, I just rumpused you just for comedic effect. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, I was busy in chat going back and forth with some really creepy individuals from the past that have slipped into utter disgustingness. It's always disappointing. Oh, who? To see... Travis. Travis who? The uh, the hipster version. The plain truth? Yeah. What's wrong with Travis? Travis is cool, right? Oh, yeah, really? Well, I'll read the chat. I haven't well, paid attention, attention to Travis. I'll have a look as he's scrolling by in the last few minutes. Uh, you, you can't get triggered by chat, dude. You have to accept it. <laughs> or at least say something spicy enough. That is a fake, Travis. Okay. Could be. <laughs> yeah, you can't tell anymore. You can't just go to channel when you click on their name, so the sock problem's just going to get worse. There we go. That's, what, that's look, YouTube. I can't do anything about Rumpus that, unfortunately. 
Because you might not know what it is, you know? I wish there was more people that debate the globe. I wish they would come on. I wish they would make their points. Because there's nobody yet I've heard that. Do you, want, do you want to go back? Is that what you want? You want them to prove it's a globe again? Are you sort of like Cypher in the Matrix? I, I wish they would make the argument. I think they do. But they do. They do. They do. Every once in a while they try. Like, you talk with them for five that minutes. Their arguments have been destroyed at this point. So it's like they have no arguments anymore. It, it's called losing. It, yeah, it's not on us. I'm just wishing there was more people that could defend it for longer than five minutes. They can't. <laughs> I, I know. That's well, you had some, someone on chat saying that a rumpus doesn't need to prove anything. You just need to Google it. And there it is. I mean, just that, needs to make that's that's the the mindset that they have, right? They yeah. read it on Google, and therefore it is. It's, yeah, and then they right. come here and say, "Look, I've Googled it. Here's Coriolis effect, <laughs> like Kosho did. He presents his citation, and it contradicts itself within the citation. Then you point out how stupid they are for not recognizing the contradiction, and then a load of rumpusing ensues, and you'll get talked through while you point out how stupid they are, or tell them off for being stupid. They'll reassert their position five times through you telling them off. That's how it goes." Hey, everybody. Hey, Nathan. Hey, Brian. Somebody like Chocolate holds on to that citation and shoves it in their face every time they want to talk about it. Yep. Yeah, very irritating chocolate to them. Very amusing to us. Their contradictions what? that they wiki search and Google search and say, look, I'm right, we're right, because it says so on Google. And you go, no, Google's giving you a contradiction and you're too stupid to recognize it. And what's odd about the whole thing is most people like chocolate shoved in their face. <laughs> 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 Holy shit. And with that, I'm going to say, if you are watching this, oh, as my kids start screaming at her iPad, if you are watching this on the Nathan Oakley Premiering stream, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you're watching this live on Nathan Oakley 1980 channel, this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who smashed the super chat, hopefully liked, commented, shared, subscribed, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. I've been Nathan Oakley. Stay tuned if you're watching on the premiering stream and I'll see you all in the next video. When they just smacks them around. I, it's a great, it, yeah, they like it too. That's what's weird. And it's, it's a masochist. <laughs> they are probably are. Oh, Retro Hold Bill. On. So I just got a quick shout out as we're still recording. So shout out to Retro Bill for uh, hitting the super chat. Really appreciate your support. He hit it just as I was doing the outro. Thank you very much indeed, Retro Bill. I know you won't see it till Sunday. <laughs> the thanks, that is. Hmm. Hey, how about Raisin? chocolate bar as in raisins raisin is this the pun detector hey no hey the puns raisins. are getting nuts hey, oh Kiwi. my god <laughs> great our, yeah we're all getting a bit crispy here that was great hey, i like Could you by the way mate in a minute uh, nathan uh, the, the, hold on just a second, Brian. The, whoever was talking a minute ago, you, I like you. Um, you, you. You're asking questions and your sort of exasperated answers are my sentiments exactly. So when you're like, yeah, I know they haven't got any evidence. Yeah, I know they can't demonstrate it, but you've asked the leading question. Epic, mate. I love it. Excellent. Thank you very much. Sing, Enjoyment. How do you say your name? Sinclesena or something? Sink Lenser, yeah. It's a great Christian. Kudos, Sync Lenser. Thank you very much. Sync Lenser, that's it. Yeah, all you have to do is talk with these people for five minutes until they run out of arguments, and then it's just fun. It's entertainment after that. Sync Lenser?
destroys 99.9% .9 of all germs. Oh, it could be. <laughs> oh my god. Sounds, sounds like so a toilet saying, disinfectant. Are you, be a after, for Germany. are you saying after five minutes of talking, they're drained? Yeah, sink and... Sink and... Go on. <laughs> Come on, Nathan, you had that one. <laughs> Drained, yes. Yeah, so I can... just love Arwen. What? <laughs> <laughs> Rump is sounding like he got his puppy stolen. The dog in him. We haven't heard a hello from QE yet, I don't think. I'm still stuck on raising the chocolate. Got a new idea, Arwen. I knew it. Hello, Quantum Eraser. Good morning. Good morning. Also, a proper hello to Brian. Good to have you. My birthday hey. today. Hey, Brian. Happy birthday, Kiwi. Happy Four birthday. years Happy in birthday. Flat Earth. Woo hoo, woo hoo, woo hoo, woo. Not real. Happy, Happy birthday, brother. Thank you. What decade? Everybody send them a globe. Yeah, <laughs> what decade? <laughs> yeah. What's your boomer tag? Globe terminator. Give, isn't us, it? Some, I think you give us a number. I'm four years old. QE needs to get toe tagged. <laughs> he needs to get toe tagged. Four years. We're not talking about flat earth birthday. We're not talking about emotional age, John. We're talking about your physical age. <laughs> Four years old in flat earth years is actually 16 years in reality. It's just how it works with flat earth years. Same as dog years? Similar. Like if you went, do you remember that time that, that we came out with that argument ages and ages ago, the, the, the black swan argument? Seems like ages ago that that first came out, isn't it? It's only a few months. <laughs> You're right about that. <laughs> I'm telling you, flat Earth years is the thing. That's flat because Earth of years ballers condensing the moment more. You know, so there's just more time things happening. For yeah, the normies, like, time just slips by a lot. You know. Well, Life goes by a lick when you're a flat earther, right? There's a lot more to be interested in and excited by. Whereas, you know, like in the Truman Show when the teacher pulls down the blind and says it's all been discovered already, that leaves you with very little excitement or inspiration for discovery if you're t being told everything's already been figured you out. You said four years in flat earth. Four years of flat time. <laughs> I, I don't believe I, that could be a thing, actually. You think about yeah, everything different. 64 or something, or maybe 74. I don't know. I just heard a date, May, 7, May 74. What? I was talking about the age, Huey. I think he, he probably had a four digit in there, and that's why he said four. So it could be 64 or 74. I don't know. No. Sounds it's really old. Flat Earth birthday, Arwen. <laughs> like, since flat Earth. Became a flat Earth Earth. <laughs> that's what he's talking what? about. <laughs> oh my God. You what? keep track of that? <laughs> keep track oh of that. <laughs> he said it, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, that's, I was addressing him. <laughs> it's like, oh, is, it, is it Flat Earth Awakening birthday or is this your actual Jeez, birthday? It's, it goes back to you can't have gas pressure without a container. Ow. Because that's when he became a flat Earth. can't have a birthday. And right. for me, it was like kind of a process. I went back and forth. You know, I'm like, you know, I would almost jump in. And now sudden, you're like, oh, wait, you know, like, step back, you know, reverse time. It was like, I just, it was really hard to do because there's so much pressure from family and friends and just you know, people, you know. It's like, you know, like that sort of, uh, there are four lights, you know, like from. You know, from 1984, and uh, uh, you learn more by questioning. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, there's a famous quote. It's like, I would rather have, you know, like questions that can't be answered than answers that can't be. You know, why do. Yeah, good... you know, like, why do these atheists say there's just some answers? They'll say that they don't believe in anything objective. There's nothing objective. Everything is subjective. And then tell you the world cannot be questioned. It absolutely cannot be questioned. I'm like, well, which one is it, dude? You know, you, either you're going to have everything can be questioned or the globe can't be questioned. Like, how are you getting to that conclusion? They should question their beliefs, right? They should do science. They should question why they believe what they do. They don't. They believe what they see. They read it and they recite it. It's a religion, dude. We we know where they recite this from. They recite it from... I just want to mention... I don't know why they do it. We can... They, I shouldn't mention yeah, they really don't. because, like NASA themselves, say that they're part of the federal government. The govern the federal government's motto is "In God We Trust." So, how is the atheist going to spout NASA as their intellectual firepower for atheism when the when the motto of NASA is "In God"? They don't believe in their own religion. It, I don't know why they believe it at all. They won't defend it at all, from what I understand. You talk to them about it, they're like, "Okay, whatever." No, no, just, that's because that's not their, their religion is heliocentrism. But they don't really do that. They just give up arguing. There's another problem. Not on, uh, not on hoses. On no. hoses, they keep arguing. If you go to the hoses, hang out this evening, you'll get plenty of argument. I have no doubt. Can I share that thing no, when you're ready? Yeah, wherever you... Well, I'll just, I'll just, yeah, sure. Thank you. Where is it? I was going to say, uh, there's another Somebody problem was with trying. the yeah, ahead, assertion of everything is subjective, which is that it's a positive claim. So if someone says everything is subjective, they have to prove it. Otherwise, they're just speaking out their nonsense. Well, you could prove yeah. that, you could prove that um, time is infinite. You could actually make for that. Guys, before we move, move on to this very is... broad ethereal subject... Brian, just pop whatever you want to present on and I'll present you. Okay, Nathan. Uh, I'll have to kind of speak through it. It's just a, a two or three minute thing. Okay. Um, let me see. How long is it? It's uh, one minute 33. That's all it is. Just a short movie uh, with two stills. Along the line of what I was showed the other day in the hallway, there was people complaining about that. I showed that on Fight the Flight or two and somewhere else, and people were complaining about it. Or that I didn't have the didn't have my phone exactly uh, what they call vertically what they're calling vertically level, right? So in this one, I show I have it on horizontal as opposed to uh, uh, or landscape as opposed to portrait mode, and I'm going to, just going to show I, I go through this and just show show exactly what I did. I'm going to show at the very end the level picture. Okay. Yeah, you're on. Ready when you are. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Okay, this is just a, a small demonstration of angular size change. And the idea is that if you can see the cross here, here uh, on the screen, is that if you're looking through a camera or even if it's leveled uh, at an object at the same height, uh, it is at the same height as your camera lens in the distance, due to angular size change, it will appear, only appear now, that it has got, dropped below the lens, right? A bit, dropped below. So you'll have to kind of tilt your lens down to actually be in line with it. But that's only a, a, a perspective effect. That's all that is. Uh, but people have been calling that a curve. So I'm just going to press play on this and I'll talk through it. Now, it was very hard in horizontal to get the clinometer correct. Uh, it was jumping from side to side. Uh, I, had to, I had to balance a lot of stuff to get the phone even that good. Um, <clears throat> but it's okay because I get it sorted afterwards. So this is just showing what that is. Now I have, just going to pause that here, sorry. This here is just me, I have a laser level and I'm showing that I have the laser on the cap of the jar at the back. I'm going to bring it around and put it onto the cap on the jar at the foreground and bring it back around to the cap of the jar at the background. So I'll just see if you see this.
what is what is this proof up to you? What do you think you're yeah, see in a minute, I'll tell you in a minute. Boston just shown that the two jars are at the same exact height using a laser. I know it's a bit glary. Now, I'm back over onto there and I leave it on the wall, I think. Okay. So, <clears throat> this is this. I took a still that was at zero, okay, to show that it's level. The camera lens is level, okay. I have the uh, horizontal on the uh, crosshairs, just at the very base of the cap here, and that re that really, in in bold terms, that should, if it's level, be pointing directly to the base of the cap here, but. Due to angular size change, it appears that that's not happening. What it actually is, it just appears that it's not happening from the, from the observer's point of view. Now, they've been using this as our curve. Uh, when they see something in a theodolite, Jesse Kozlowski thought this was the case. When he saw something lower than the center of his frame in a theodolite at a distance, he thought that it was because of our curve. And I, and he did admit to me after a few days that he didn't take angular size into, into account in that observation or in his observations in general, he doesn't do that. But this actually was, was proven at uh, the Bedford levels uh, test or, obs or observation, I should say, went on with uh, Samuel Robotham and I can't remember his opposition's name, but how Samuel Robotham uh, actually proved his point was that he actually angled his uh, lens right the center of his uh, crosshairs of his uh, telescope he angled it so it would actually line up with the first two markers which would be the bottom of this cap and the bottom of that cap and he said if it continues on straight it should line up with every other marker along the way if the marker is along the way after that start dropping below the crosshairs then that means that the uh, that the, there's a curve uh, along the Bedford levels uh, and he, he, the, along the Bedford canals and uh, he loses the bet or whatever. But it didn't, it stayed aligned. And he said that was angular size change and that's how we, that's how we actually won that bet. But ballers are talking, are saying for it, that if something is dropped down in the distance, when it should be, let's say what they think is this should basically be up at the same height in your, in your view as this one here. But this one here is close to you. And even though they say, they know what angular size change is. They still want this one at the background to be up, up here in the sky. So what they don't understand is it's just a perspective issue that makes it look like you're looking over the top of it, but you're not really. You're actually looking here at the bottom of that cap. That's actually where you're looking, but it just appears that you're not. And this just because I've gotten a lot of uh, flack over my other pictures, people giving out saying it's not level, it's not this, it's not that. So there you go. There's a level one. If you want another one, I'll do another one. Okay, there's just two photographs, so it's this one, and there's another one coming after. Um, I just wanted to see, make it short as clearly as possible. And using the laser, the laser, there's the other one, it's a bit darker, but might suit some people more. Using the laser, uh, I showed that both of those are at the same exact height, because the laser, laser works in a straight line, doesn't work any other way. Absolutely perfect. Thank you for sharing that with okay. us. Thank you. Uh, I'll unshare my screen now, Nathan, okay. Okay, thanks. Very cool. Excellent. Polished. Uh, nice work. Nice. nice yeah, work, very. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. So what you're saying is, let me see if I can get this straight. That messy Jesse Kozlowski, boy, you better not show up around me, sir. I'm going to tear you up. And Walter Bislin and Sally and all their Mr. Cartesian coordinates all their horse shit can be summed up in getting confused with earth curvature and angular size change. Yes, that's exactly what it is. They don't take angular size change into account. You people are retarded. Okay? There's no other conclusion that can be made. You're retards. Delusional. Double speaking. Dunning-Kruger. Numpty dipshit retards. 
That's it. Thanks again, Brian. Excellent. So, th th thanks to you, Nathan, for allowing me to share. Uh, I hope it, it's a help. And thanks to the audience. And I want to thank the Academy. Thank my mom uh, for having <laughs> me four years ago. <laughs> well, why don't you recount us with the story of how Quantum Eraser became a flat earth? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good idea. Never heard Quantum Eraser defend. That that's a personal story, okay? Okay. Okay then, well, that was lovely. Thank you for that. I'll I'll edit it in from a different video. <laughs> Come on, John. <laughs> you guys all know it. Jeez, oh, man, it's not special or anything. I was just I challenged. Know, good, you know it. I'd be interested to hear how you end things. You should go into it a little more. You should defend Flat Earth, actually. Yeah, how dare you never defend Flat Earth, John? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> Go on, it's, it's, it's your fourth year in Flat Earth. It'd be nice to hear your story. Just me, even though if people have heard it already, there will be people who haven't, I guarantee that. Yeah, it happened really quick. I was a flat earther in less than a plank time. What had happened was I was on a forum, ponding evolutionists, dragging around by their short hairs, and I'd always bring up the second law of thermodynamics. This was uh, four years ago today. Um... I guess somebody was watching from the outside, uh, not saying much, but knew that I had talked about the second law of thermodynamics all the time. So all he did was sort of challenge me off topic. He goes, hmm, how can you have gas pressure next to a vacuum without a container? That was it. That, that, that was it. I, I looked at the question. And I had already known that astrophysics, cosmology, astronomy, uh, Newton, Einstein, I already knew they were all freaking full of shit. I already exposed them before. So it was a relatively easy jump. As soon as I seen that question, I said, oh, man, I'm screwed. Because I can't, there's no comeback. I mean, so that was it. Thank you very much. Saves me a lot of editing. It would have been cool, though. You could have edited it in, like, Star Wars or something. Like, how did you become yeah. a flat earther? Yeah. And then... <laughs> in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> what, what the... Oh, that's not Star Wars. Is that Wagner? That's Star Wars. You know, you know what? You know what that is about the whole. What's great about the whole? I'll try it again. <laughs> hey, happy birthday, Q.E. Uh, what's great about the whole thing is, less than four years later, you bring the black swan on the entirety of the whole argument. I'd just like to say it's, it's nice to see that over this whole process you've mellowed so much. <laughs> I'm gonna get tough on you. You should have realized this a long time ago. That baby cry was perfect after that statement. Was that Neil? Was that Neil? Back then? That was Neil. How come you did not realize this 20 years ago, Kiwi? You're right. Yeah, why were you Guilty wasting some charge. time? We we all should have recognized it 20 years ago. <laughs> As soon as we learned about anything about gas, we should have all said, hmm, wait a minute. I'm breathing that stuff. <laughs> and we're in a vacuum. Uh, how does that work out? <laughs> but Star Wars and aliens and all those things are much cooler. So it's better to stay in the not really is level. It's more comfortable for people. I hold well, quantum it, 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 to a higher standard. They, they taught you stuff 
uh, let's say if they did teach, uh, let's say, teenagers about gas and gas pressure and all the rest of it, they teach them that on a different day from when they teach them the uh, whole heliocentric thing. So it's like people weren't putting two and two together. You know, that's why the bowlers think that gas pressure and atmospheric pressure are two different things. Because they were taught it in two different ways. About they, they were taught in a way that there must be some two, two kind of different things. You know, you know that's how I remember. It's like I left school just before fifteen, so I didn't see. And I, I basically I left school the day I walked in there. I, I was forced to walk in there, let's just say. But I, I, I was never interested in school. And all I remember is in school is is you're taught something. What I do remember from observation, you're taught something, uh, and then you're if then you're taught a different thing, and the two actually connect, but they don't tell you there's a connection there. You know, this kind of thing. So it's like...